Hey guys, I'm Carl McClarty, McClarty Film. So I've been studying Chinese for over 20 years. Now originally I did study uh, formally in universities, including UCLA and UH Manoa. After university, I lived in China, really internalized it. And now the problem is, once you're not in that environment, how do you keep the language sharp? How do you keep it fresh and gradually um, let it grow without letting it atrophy and fade away, which is easy to do with language if you, if, if you don't use it every day. So now I'm And so I've got a list of the top 10 ways that I've been able to maintain my Chinese after all these years. And these are daily practices that I still use. So number one, this one is kind of silly, but it is very important. Um, I am a strong believer in airplane mode. My phone is one of the biggest sources of distraction that I have. So for me, before I go into my study mode, I always set the phone onto airplane mode. And um, that just helps me focus in. Another tool I have is the um, using timers. So whether that's with your watch or your phone or even like online with eggtimer.com, that's a good way. And so just trying to set your blocks of like 20 minutes is a solid block of zero distractions. So the outside world can't connect to you and you can't connect to anything else. And that will help you focus. And focus is key for everything and in my language study. Um, number two, and this is the big one, is I try to do um, things daily. And my biggest habit that I have to get done if I don't get anything else done is my link.com um, minimum links per day. So I've, I have it set to the very, very minimum and I only do 10 links a day. But once you get going and get in there, um, I'm gonna double, triple that. But um, by setting it as a minimum and it has a reward system so you get apples for daily streaks, um, and believe it or not, that works. It gets me motivated to uh, get my daily apple. And Link is a website which has been described as the Swiss army knife of language learning. And that's what sold me on it, actually. Some, someone reviewed this, this site and, you know, I love Swiss army knives. And basically it does everything in one place. So it mostly focuses on reading and listening. And so there are a lot of uh, different articles. Um, there are podcasts. I like to listen to a podcast from out of Australia, SBS, SBS Chinese. Um, so there are Chinese people in Australia that have uh, a podcast about cultural differences. And then there's a written transcript and um, of course the audio. And then you can, the, the written transcript is, there's a built in online dictionary with everything on link so i use that to save new words as i'm learning and to create or save sentences that uh, i've seen before but i want to refresh or uh, just new words and link uh, there's there's a lot i can talk about that but i'll leave that for another video okay number two is sorry number that was two number three is google translate or um other online dictionaries but for me google translate is something i always have with me it's on my phone and i use it a lot and so for chinese and for spanish sometimes i will use the translation so i'll, I'll use the audio i speak in english and it will translate into my target language which is chinese or spanish and um, it's a really great tool and google translate you can also use the the camera the smart camera so I can just hover over a menu or over any Chinese text, or even I can screenshot a meme, you know, with Chinese on it. And then it will scan the text in into Google. Once it's scanned the um, text into Google Translate, I can pick up new, new vocab that way. And uh, Google Translate is awesome. And uh, I, I've, I've done a couple videos on that before where I, I test the, the simultaneous tram, translation. Um, and it's really cool. Uh, number four is old school. <laughs> it's, uh, 
uh, radio. So I try when I lived in LA before there was um, uh, 1300 AM, which is a Chinese language show. Um, and that is cool. Uh, but right now my current location, I don't have um, radio on the AM or FM dial. I don't have Chinese on the AM or FM dial, but I do have Spanish. So I listen to Spanish anytime I'm in the car. It's on the Spanish channel, which means I listen to a lot of Ranchero music, but it's small price to pay to learn Spanish. Um, something that I've been experimenting with is the uh, radio apps. So you have a lot of online radio. And so if I've been using something called um, Simple Radio, and this app lets you search for radio stations in Chinese or in Spanish anywhere in the world. And so I listen to, like you can find stations um, in Beijing or in Malaysia or in Australia in Chinese language. And it depends on the time zones of which one I'll listen to. But a lot of times I honestly will still just listen to, um, like there's a Chinese station out of Pasadena, um, California, and and some, sometimes sometimes Beijing, and then for Spanish, I'll listen to stuff from Mexico City or Barcelona. And that's once again called Simple Radio. There's several different um, apps, but that's the one that I've been using and it's free and it's good. Um, now, for speaking, I haven't talked about speaking. So for self-study, of course, it's best to have a friend or a partner to uh, speak in Chinese with but I don't right now. So um, number five is talk to yourself. It sounds silly, but um, talking to yourself in Chinese is, is great. I do it when I run. So that is uh, mumpal. It's a, more of a slow jog. Um, so I will talk to myself. I, I, I give, it sounds kind of weird, but give myself pep talks. Pep, give myself pep talks in Chinese and um, it's kind of a fun way to do it and then also sometimes in the shower I will talk out loud um, in Chinese or Spanish and just having a conversation like a cray cray uh, out loud in Chinese or Spanish is a great way to practice speaking okay so now number six is to call a real person on the phone um, talk to someone on the, on the phone and if if you do just an old school phone call in chinese or spanish it's great because um, you get to reconnect with a friend and um, just talking without any visual it makes you forces you to rely completely on your ears which is good and I also have, um, you know, I have friends in China and most people use WeChat, so I will do video chats with my friends and that helps. And then um, Zoom is also another option. Zoom is cool because you can record the conversation and then, it, you know, first letting the other person know that you're going to be recording. So talking with a native speaker is your best practice for improving your speaking. Um, and if you don't have friends that you can call on the phone or chat on WeChat or Zoom, um, there's a paid version. And my, my choice is italki. And italki, you know, you, you can hire informal tutors, uh, but it's basically just talking to a friend on Skype and they charge you a small fee. Um, I use this for Spanish. I don't think I've used it for Chinese, but it's a, it's a great platform for finding a native speaker. And you can even choose a city where the person lives to be your tutor so seven, which is record yourself. So speaking on camera or on mic is a great way for you to hear um, your problems in speaking, or maybe you pick up some speech patterns like you, you like to say in, in Chinese, you know, you, you have certain filler words or stuttering words that you use too much that are annoying and so you can help correct that those problems in your speech and you can also hear your pronunciation problems and um, it's just really good idea to record yourself whether it's audio or video um, and then for me I've recently started doing 
uh, speaking in Chinese on camera for YouTube. And, you know, that, that's a, the same thing. It's just, it's a good test for me to see where I'm at and the problems that I'm having. If you'd like, you can check out my YouTube channel here. I have more um, conversations and tips in, for studying Chinese and some Spanish stuff on, on uh, different playlists here. Okay, number eight is watch movies, watch TV, watch YouTube videos. I've watched like all the old Stephen Chow movies. I mean, I've, I've watched tons and tons of crappy Chinese movies over the years. Nowadays, I watch most things on Netflix like everyone else and YouTube. So there is a cool app well, it's actually a Chrome plugin called Learn Languages with Netflix or Learn Languages with YouTube. And I highly recommend that. And you can have dual um, subtitles on screen while you're watching your movies. And it, it comes with some other features and it's really cool and it's free. And I use that for studying Spanish and for Chinese. And it's um, really cool. And even if you're just watching Netflix normally, um, without that, you can uh, use the closed cap, turn on your closed captions so you can see the text as you're watching the movie and pause, pause the movie and you can pick up some really cool phrases, some catchphrases or something like I was just watching one the other day and I learned, um, 时间紧迫,紧张的紧迫,坏的迫,时间紧迫。which means uh, we're running out of time. And that was on a Netflix show called Day Night or something like that. Number nine, keep a notebook. So I have these cheapo notebooks that I got on Amazon. I'll just write down whatever interesting words that I have forgotten or want to relearn. Or, or want to learn new and um, I was I had a goal of just having one page one page per day um, um, in the lang in Chinese or in Spanish so two pages a day and the act of actually writing out Chinese characters uh, helps a lot because then you can um, revisit the radicals and sometimes just looking at uh, a character as you write it will help you understand the thinking behind the creation of, of the word you know a thousand years ago or five thousand years ago so like for example today i was looking up um i was i was using link to read fanti the traditional chinese which i'm working on this year and just a simple word, uh, dian, like dian now, electric uh, computer, electric brain or computer. The dian is really, it's just, um, it's just uh, a rain with electricity below it. And um, so as I was looking at that, um, I was breaking down the character. That's the traditional form. Of course, the, the new version of dian after 1949 or whenever they simplified the Chinese, um, they got rid of the rain. But it is cool, like, you know, the ancients, the first time they saw electricity, their whole concept was, you know, lightning. So lightning was electricity. Um, so anyways, writing down the characters is really helpful. You don't have to do it a lot, but just to keep your hand fresh and to, uh, and keep your characters fresh is important. And the last one I'm going to share today is to use chopsticks. So Chinese always are very polite and they always say, Oh, ni zhong wo de zhen ma hao a? And I like to just, you know, instead of just saying, Oh, nali nali, which is standard, you just say something, Oh, shi yin wei wo chi jiao zi chi duo le, or, you know, I ate a lot of jiao zi. Um, so whenever you can, go eat Chinese food. You're probably going to meet Chinese from all over China and there are Chinese restaurants everywhere in the world every corner I don't care where you live and um, chances are someone in the restaurant is going to speak Chinese 
Right now, uh, during COVID-19, it's not that convenient, but over all the years, I've, I've enjoyed talking to chefs and, and waiters and um, people in restaurants in Chinese. And it's always a kick because they're everywhere in the world, not just China. And when you can't travel, you can always go to your neighborhood Chinese restaurant instead. So that about wraps it up. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, P30 or P40? Which is the best phone with the new phone? Uh, P30 Pro. P30 Pro. So how much is it? How much is it? No, no, no.